For another time this year, I was shitting my pants in the fourth. After a brutal buzzer beater against Denver, the Dubs bounced back with a win over the worst team in the NBA in the Detroit Pistons. With no one playing particularly well, I want to focus on the performance of the two backup bigs in Trace Jackson Davis and Dario Sharge playing off the gravity of the Warriors guards, so let's get to it. With Kevon Looney not playing as well this season, we've come to rely on the newcomer and the rookie to help out. In the first quarter, we have a Spain pick and roll in which the big in TJD comes for the first green, while a second guard in Pajenski comes for the second pick on the big's defender. Our good friend in James Wiseman actually smells this one out and calls for a pre-switch so he can remain deep in the paint and closer to the basket. However, there's a slight miscommunication by Detroit as the guards do not pre-switch and two guys go up to Pajenski, which actually allows Chris Paul to use the pick. Now we have a two-on-one advantage against Wiseman, and Kevin Knox is forced to rotate to help down as the weak side low man. Great decision by Sharish to move up higher on the wing for a better angle at the open three ball, and the rest is easily done by CP3 for the assist. Sharge was eating left and right in the paint in the first half. We have a CP and Kaminga pick and roll where immediately they get a switch, but the real action is on the weak side with Sharge setting a pin down for Clay. The Pistons are only switching off-ball screens involving guards, and though Killian Hayes is a good defender, he has the trail the shooter, and the solid screen here by Charge forces his man in Wiseman to have to step up and contest the shot. This leaves Charge free room to roll towards the basket, and a great dump-off bounce pass by Thompson for the open layup. Good ball movement here. I've previously made a video on how well Charge plays off the pick and pop, especially his chemistry with Chris Paul. Here we have a chase action in which Paul first throws the ball to Charge, then immediately runs towards him for the handoff. This essentially turns into a high pick and roll and the Pistons aren't switching with Cade and Durin. So on this rescreen, Durin is so focused on Paul in a show even though Cade has it covered that Charge makes a good read and immediately pops out to the perimeter. CB3 makes the bounce pass before the pop was even completed, allowing Charge to get in rhythm for the open catch and shoot three. TJD got so many pocket passes for wide open dunks this whole game. On now to bounce play, nothing fancy here but starts off with the ball up top with Kaminga. Detroit is switching off ball screens involving guards like I said, so this first back pick leads to a switch. The second down screen set by TJD to free up Steph forces Cade to trail a little behind, and since Curry is obviously a shooter, Duran as a big has a step up at show. Steph already reads this early and slips the bounce pass right to Jackson Davis. That initial cut by Wiggins to bring his man to the other side of the court does not allow Burks to act as a late rotation, so TJD finishes the wide open dunk. Literally the next possession just shows how bad Detroit is. High pick and roll with Clay as the initiator and Jackson Davis setting the screen. The guard is fighting over while the big in Jalen Duran shows up high since Clay is the shooter, but this is the weak side low man's rotation. However, it is apparently non-existent here as Bogdanovich forgets his job so he's an easy pass or rolling TJD for a second straight flush. Jackson Davis was really acting like prime Dwight Howard here. On the weak side, we have a classic back pick set by Steph for a potential alley-oop, but the Pistons switch off-ball screens involving guards and wings. Just like the earlier play, the second action leads to a pin down by TJD to try to free up Steph. Similar coverage with K trailing, but at this time Jalen Duran is showing up super high to try and prevent the dump-off pass. So Curry counters by dribbling to get some open space towards the basket, and is still able to get this ridiculous alley-oop pass off the backboard. Impressive hand-eye coordination by the rookie, and nothing Cade can do here, and somehow TJD is still able to catch and finish this. All you're really asking for is for the bigs to play off the gravity of the Splash Brothers, and here's another example of it. Closing the first half, CP3 tries to see the baseline action and see Clay Thompson running off a pin down by TJD. I personally think this was a terrible read by Jalen Duran, as Clay's defender in Livers isn't even trailing that far behind, so there's no need to try and jump the pass and deny Thompson. This leads to a terrible miscommunication, as Livers did not assume the switch, so TJD makes a simple read to flash for the pass, and of course Paul gets in for another open dunk. In the third with Golden State clinging to a small lead, Detroit switched to a 2-3 zone. This time Dara used the gravity of his own shooting to attract two pistons, and we all know the key to beating a zone is getting the ball to the middle. TJD calls for the ball and cuts right down the lane, and with this kind of momentum, it's a no-brainer pass for Sharage, as the rookie gets an and-one on James Wiseman. 
Last but not least, I think we have enough of a sample size to see a productive charge as a small ball 5. Here JK is looking for a play but goes for the simple dribble handoff. Charge's shooting ability brings slower and bigger rim protectors out on the perimeter, and with Detroit not switching screens involving bigs, Jalen Duran is in a drop coverage, so Charge catches the ball in rhythm for a pull of 3. Great read. There you guys have it. On a must win and with arguably the lineup and coaching roster on the line, the Warriors pulled out an unconvincing win against the Detroit Pistons on the second end of back to back. With another clutch game in the Splash Brothers playing relatively poorly, I wanted to focus on the solid performances of both backup bigs playing off the gravity of the Warriors guards for wide open shots and dunks in the paint. Charge put up 17 and TJD with 11 points and 9 rebounds, and both seem to be outplaying Kevon Looney on a consistent basis due to their offensive capability. It'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward, so if you guys like this breakdown, like and subscribe to see more.